Hello and welcome to episode 4 of the how to make an RPG game in Godot 4 and today we're going to be creating a little slime enemy so if you need help making an enemy in your game this is going to be perfect. But before we get started I just want to ask if you could go down below hit that subscribe button drop a like on this video to help you to push this series to more inspiring game developers so more people can learn to make their own Godot games as well. But let's get started with episode 4 and create this little slime. Okay so to create an enemy for our RPG game we're going to want to go and create a brand new scene. And in this scene, well, we're going to make it a character body 2D, just like the player is. And we can just name this enemy. So that is our enemy. And in our enemy, we're going to need a couple of different things. I will just start off with like the animated sprite and we can make our sprites for this. So we can just click on new frames, come up down here, and then we can insert our sprite frame which is if you want to download this art there will be a link to it in the description below but we go to characters slime and then we have like seven vertical and like five or five vertical seven horizontal and that looks good right so we'll make all these different uh animations so like this is going to be our idle animation for our slime let's create a brand new animation go in here slime.png it's going to be seven horizontal and five vertical this right here is going to be our walk animation and we'll also have a death animation which will be used in a later episode it won't be used in this episode but it will be used in a later episode in this series so we can go here and this is our death animation so death animation boom so if we play, you can see, or if we play the animations, you can see this is our idle animation, this is our walking animation, and this is our death animation, right? So, boom, that looks good, but our player does not work, right? So, to make our player work, we're gonna need to add a couple different things, right? So, first of all, we need, on an enemy, we need a detection area, because if we don't have a detection area, how are we gonna know if we need our enemy to be chasing the player? or if we need it to be idle, right? Because if the player is in the enemy's detection area, then we want the enemy to chase the player. So to make a detection area, we'll make an area 2D and we will just keep it basic and call it the detection area, right? And in an area 2D, you need to have a collision shape. So we actually have a zone that the player can enter and exit and we'll just make this like that big. That works we can always change this in the future so we'll just make it this big to start and now we need to make some layer changes right because we don't want the slime or our enemy we don't want it to be picking up a tree and then saying oh the tree is the player so let's chase the tree that would not you know that would not be good so for layers we can go down here to our I don't know exactly where it's at I don't remember I think so okay so in layers I think it is here in the uh, yeah so it's in the area 2d right so we go to our area 2d and we can just set the basically this detection area to layer 2 right and then we can also set its mask or we can set this okay so let's think about this real quick so we can set our enemy we need our enemy to be on layer two and then we also need it to be on mass two right so this means it picks up things that are on layer two so it can pick up our enemy but we also need it to pick up our player right so we need to go to our player and then we need to have our players collision shape here or I guess we it would be the the player itself we would have our players collision collision shape I don't know exactly where it's at, but I guess it's in collisions. Yeah, so we'll have our player's collision shape set to layer two as well, because now if it's on layer two, the player can interact with the environment, but it can also interact with the enemy because it's on layer two. But, you know, like this tile map here, it's layers, they are not on layer two, right? They are not on layer two, so our enemy will not be able to interact with the environment. It will be able to collide with the environment because that will be on a different collision shape, which we can add right now. So right, the player 
or the enemy's actual collision shape is going to be this collision shape. So this is the player's actual collision shape. And let's also take the, our animated sprite, let's move up our animated sprite here a little bit so we can go to offset and we can do Y and we can offset it to like negative eight or maybe like negative six just so the bottom of our enemy is down here on the bottom of our is like the the player the kinematic body 2d the center of the kinematic body 2d is towards the bottom of the player so our y sorting works from the last episode so if you haven't you know checked out y sorting and you don't know how to add y sorting go check out that video because it is very important for y sorting so your player can go in front and behind trees and stuff and not look weird right so that's that but now if we kind of like we'll, we'll save the scene but now we need like actual coding right we need coding so everything works so to do that we're gonna have to go and to our detection area or we're gonna first have to create a script on our enemy right so we'll just name this enemy 2d and then all of this we can delete and then we can go to our detection area and we can do our node and we can do body entered and we can signal that to our enemy and then we can also do body exited and we can also signal that to our enemy so when let's start off up here when our player enters the when our player enters this area right so when our player enters the zone we need our enemy to chase it so we'll start by having a variable up here right we need a var let's just make the all the variables real quick so we have speed which we can just equal to like 25 and we can always change this later i don't know why it's updating like that but 25 and then we can have var player we can call it like a, a player chase so we can see if we're in chase with the player and we can also have a var player equals for now it will equal null but we'll set our player right here as so as our body enters the detection area we'll just do player equals body right because player equals body so whatever enters the detection area is going to be under the variable body so our player now equals whatever body just entered the zone right and then since our player just entered the zone we'll say player chase equals player chase equals true right because now we need to be in chase of the player but when the body exits the zone then we want our player to equal to null because we don't want to be chasing any player and we want our player dot our, our player chase to equal to false because now we no longer want to chase the player because the player is now out of the zone right so now we know what our player is when it enters and we know when to chase our player so let's make a process for, or i guess we can make a physics yeah yeah we'll just make a physics process function so with our physics process function we'll basically have an if statement if player chase so basically if player chase is equal to true then we want our position of our this is the position of our enemy right so we want our position to equal our player dot position because we want to move towards the player, right? So player.position minus our position. And then we also want to divide this by our speed, right? So whatever our speed is, we'll divide it by that. And we'll, we can play around with the speed here in just a minute. We also want to have, so that's, technically that's it, right? Technically that's it. We can, we need to add our animations here, but we can do that in a minute. So technically this should all proof check proof check technically it should all work right so if we go to our world and we instance our enemy and we play our world as you can see it does chase it does chase our player let's actually separate them because they were they spawned like on top of each other so we'll put our enemy here and we'll put our player here and then let's also go to debug and visible collision shapes turn those on as well as you can see this is the collision shape for our enemy so as soon as we enter that it should start ch chasing us as you can see it does but the enemy is a little too fast right the enemy is very very quick so 
let's make a little change real quick so i so let's see we have divided by right so it, the bigger we make this the slower it gets so if we go to 50 so the higher the speed the slower the enemy is if that makes sense it's kind of opposite because we're dividing because we divide the positions right so if we go to our world you can see now our enemy is much slower than it was before and you know now maybe it's a little too slow right so we can just go to enemy and we can make this like a we'll make it like a 40 right but now we need some animations right so we just made a couple animations and let's just play these animations so if we're chasing basically so if we're chasing then we want our animated sprite we want our so yeah if we're chasing the player we want our animated sprite 2d to play the animation walk right so now if we play the world we'll see that it plays the animation walk when being chased and it's always going to play the animation walk even when it should be it's still a little quick right so i guess we'll slow it down a little bit but you can see it still plays the animation so at least we know the animation works at least we know we can play the animation but to fix that we're just so uh, else so if player is not in chase then we want our animated sprite.2d to play our idle animation right and we'll make this a little bit slower so we we'll do like 35 and if we play now you can see that it plays our jumping animation but when we we still can't exit okay we still we still cannot exit so i guess we'll go back to like we'll go to we'll go to 40 we'll leave it at 40 40 was 40 was fine but as you can see once we exit we are playing in idle animation and when we're in chase we're playing a walk animation but you can see the player's facing this way when it's chasing us and it's still facing that way but it's coming this way which is not good so to fix that let's go to our enemy and let's add a little if statement here so we can check if the position.x is like greater than zero so we can see which way we're moving right so we'll do if player dot position dot position dot x minus position dot x of our enemy if that is less than zero yeah so if that is less than zero then we need our animated sprite dot flip h to equal to true because this means we would be going left right and then basically if we're not going left then we need our animated sprite dot flip h to be equal to false because that means we're going right so now if we play not the player scene if we play the world scene you can see we now we're now chasing this way when we exit we are now in idle as soon as we cross this way you can see the enemy flips back and forth and basic enemy so do we have like y sorting does y sorting work on the enemy you can see y sorting does work on the enemy so everything is good to go for our enemy everything is working just fine and everything is working actually very very great right so that looks very good for a basic enemy and obviously an enemy is nothing without a combat system so next episode we're going to be going over how to create a pretty pretty i mean it's like if you're a beginner if you're just starting out and go that you'll be able to follow along but it's also a pretty advanced combat system in Goda. so you, the player will be able to attack the enemy the enemy will be able to attack the player the player will be able to die the enemy will be able to die and everything like that so that's going to be pretty legit so that's going to be in episode five of this series so make sure you come back to that that's going to be in two days i'm going to upload that so it's going to be a pretty big video and it's going to go over a lot of things that are important to learn in godot so Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you learned something about creating enemies in this in this video. And if you need any help with your Godot game, let me know in the comments and I would love to help you out. But until next time, hit that subscribe button, drop a like on, on this video so more inspiring game developers can learn to make their own enemies in Godot 4 as well. And uh, remember, next video is a combat system, so it's going to be pretty advanced. I'll leave a link to the playlist for this series in the pinned comment and in the description. And all the art that we are using in this series is going to be a link in the description to an HIO page 
for all that but stay safe and have a wonderful rest of your day